In this program, focusing on street enhancement and signage, we look at the work of Brian Keem. Brian has been responsible for street works in the Mallee town of Oyen and an innovative approach to signage for a number of neighbouring communities. Activities that have had a positive effect on local economic activity, tourism and community identity. Logan seven or eight years ago was a type of a town that was a typical Mallee town in the northern part of Victoria where tourists and locals alike didn't want to go into the street without any trees in the streets, uh, dust piling up in the gutters, roly polies blowing down the street, one had visions of high noon and it definitely was a place people tried to get away from rather than spend time in. Basically we didn't like what was there but we didn't want to drastically alter the character of the town and so we looked at what was there, it had inherited some posts that were on the verandas so it had a bit of character anyway and we took that and developed it into a street plan which included the pergolas that are there today and the greenery and the lighting effects and so on. So we went to the individual commercial people in the town centre and uh, went around and sold the idea of what benefits there would be to each of them as we went around. So we've used um, uh, sort of labour market programs to em employ and train un unemployed people um, working on the streetscape program that's developed gradually. Yes, we started with a group of eight people with no previous skills and the first project we put them onto was associated with a, a town entry sign that was adjacent to the main street and they did a, an extremely difficult paving project in that area and from there they went into the main street where we got to the intersection and they used those skills admirably. That monument they wanted to remove out of the main street and it would have lost its focal point in the middle of the town and one of the first issues that I looked at, I decided to keep that monument there and make a feature of it. The actual pergolas around the corners, when we came to consider those, we spent a lot of time designing the actual shape. What we've done with the pergolas, uh, it emulates, if you like, the uh, existing veranda structure and also some of the buildings in the town. The power access points that we put in there were another at attempt to try and introduce more uh, activity into the streetscape. Now people can plug in, say, a boiler for hot dogs or something similar in the street. We've uh, planted a Christmas tree. We'll be able to have focused lights on it to pick up reflectors and so on that we intend to hang on the tree. Like most Mallee towns, Oyun was very dead at night and so we decided to put a bit of light into the corner and we went to low watt sodium oxide lights which give a yellow light, uh, very economical to run. We have lighting overhead on the pergolas so that as a driver is approaching somebody stepping off the footpath, the light is on the driver's side so it illuminates the pedestrian so it makes it easier for the driver to see. And at the paver level, we have little bollard lights, louver lights, that are very low and close to the ground so that they can see that they're going to step off the kerb. The kerb steps out into the street itself to reduce the degree of access that people need to have across the road so that particularly uh, we've got a, a high percentage of elderly people in our locality and it means that they have less distance to walk across the trafficked area. It was an observation in other townscape centres that we went to in other municipalities. They had a problem where people used to get out of their motor vehicles and walk straight across the beds and by putting the raised pavers around the edge, adults and children alike step up onto it and one foot behind the other and they just walk straight round the corners. The colour scheme for the various projects that we've been doing around here we decided again to look at what was natural in the area and one of the things we found was a very nice colour which was evident locally in our drift sands. It's also found around the edge of the salt lakes and it's a, uh, almost a pinky clay colour and uh, the other colour is an ironstone and the two are a very good contrast but they're also natural and in this area they form a, a good colour background for what is here. 
it's very, very noticeable the number of people who are now in the street because before you would not find a car there in uh, the middle of the day. In fact, all the shops used to close between 12 and 1 and that's seven years ago. Now they're open. In the earlier stages there was a lot of opposition to the work that was going on, mainly because of the fact that most of the councillors here were rural based. I guess it's fair to say that there were some people that had doubts about it. Uh, uh, we were very road orientated of course in our particular area, but as time progressed and the work uh, we could see the fruits of the labour that had been put in here and it seems to me that the people have uh, backed it very strongly over recent years. It's given the town a sense of identity, it's given it a heart, it's a much more substantial town than, than other Mallee centres and it's, it's a very busy commercial centre now. I really think that since the street has been changed uh, with the pergolas and the flower beds and the, the way the monument has been done that it has attracted more business into the town, particularly in, as far as tourists and visitors go. I'm quite sure it's improved, you know, the business in the town. Certainly we're getting a lot more visitors into the town. They get out of their car, they walk up and down the street, they look in the shops. Uh, if they buy, fantastic. If they don't, the town's in their mind. Next time they come through, they'll make it a point to stop a little bit longer. So any, everybody benefits from that. It seems to have boosted the morale of the, the local population. It's also worked as a, uh, an attraction for uh, you know, travelling people. Since the sign's been there we get a lot more tourists that venture up in the streets. It wouldn't do previously because they didn't realise that we had the businesses in this area. There have been people coming through this area for many years but they just drive along the highway and didn't realise that we had a, a city, a sort of township here with the, the shops that we have got. The interesting thing was that there had been two other signs on steel posts, the typical traditional signs there for probably the previous 20 years and nobody had taken any notice of them. But they certainly did with a more attractive and non-conventional type of sign. In his capacity as Assistant Shah Engineer, Brian has also been responsible for a number of innovative town signs for communities stretching from Oyen to the South Australian border. Coming over the border, you come into a small town called Murrayville. Uh, it has a lot of poultry farms in the area, wheat, and grazing, sheep. And they have a lot of windmills in the area. And they ran a competition, and unlike a lot of competitions, the sign that came out of that was quite attractive. We took a little bit of uh, poetic licence with this and curved the, or arched the top of it, just to give it a little bit more character and a little bit more appeal. And the other feature about this sign is that there is a lot of reflective material on it. All these figures here, the yellow, the white, are all reflective and at night it really stands out like a beacon. Very, very effective. The next sign that went up was for Kawanji, And Kawanji is a small town of perhaps uh, 20 population. And the locals asked if they could simply have a little plaque put underneath the town sign saying, hometown of Larry Perkins who is their uh, most famous son. And they said they had something like $200, $250. And I said, I think we can do a little bit more than a simple plaque. The community provided me with a poster and a photo of Larry. And we went to a local sign company and they did this beautiful work on a sign which today is a real stopper of traffic on the highway. There's a number of things that should be taken into consideration with signs. Um, while the regulations are supposed to be guided towards square or rectangular signs, you may be able to get some non-standard shapes, such as we've produced circles, uh, signs with curved tops. The shape is important. Uh, the location it's placed in is important, that you don't want it standing out like a sore thumb uh, on the side of a road, if you can get a nice backdrop for it. Uh, colour is important and also the number of words you have is critical. Brian Keem's work in the Mallee with signage and streetscape shows how a careful and considered approach to physical enhancement can not only provide a community with a more attractive environment but can also help to revive a commercial centre which in turn means retaining and creating employment.